Hey everyone, I'm Tara Roberts with Fantasy Pros, and today I am counting down 15 of the riskiest players in your fantasy draft. But before we get started, we have a contest winner to announce, and the winner of the autographed Tyreek Hill jersey courtesy of pristineauction.com is Eat Powder. Please get in touch with our customer support agents at mailbagfantasypros.com with your mailing address and proof of your subscription to the Fantasy Pros channel, and we will get that jersey shipped out to you. Again, the winner is Eat Powder. Congratulations. And since we just announced the winner, let's go ahead and start a new contest. Want a chance to win a signed Gabriel Davis Buffalo Bills jersey courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction? Subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below in this video, and that's it. We will be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up to claim your prize. Now, back to our 15 riskiest players. This is a big list with big names. These players could leave your team in shambles. Let's go ahead and get started. At number 15, Michael Thomas. The good news is Michael Thomas ADP has pushed him into the wide receiver three category. The bad news is that doesn't really mean much if he doesn't actually produce on the field. Drafting Michael Thomas could give you one of the most talented receivers in the NFL at a very cheap ADP and push you to victory. But you're also drafting a guy we haven't seen catch a touchdown since 2019. This could be comeback player of the year, or you could be looking at the next AJ Green. At 14, TJ Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson got off to a fantastic start last year, putting up nearly 50 fantasy points in his first two games combined. But that was with the Lions receiving core being non-existent. As the season continued, his production became very inconsistent, and he averaged just 10 fantasy points per game through the remainder of the season. That's just not enough production to justify drafting him at his ADP. It's way too risky, and I'll be passing on him for players that can produce the same statistics at a much cheaper ADP. At 13, Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown is in line to be Kyler Murray's main target through the first six games of the season with the suspension of DeAndre Hopkins. This will be fantastic for Brown's value, but what happens when DeAndre Hopkins returns? Through the first seven games of the 2021 season when DeAndre Hopkins was healthy, the Cardinals then wide receiver two Christian Kirk averaged 13.7 points per game. If Brown took that same trajectory, those first six games wouldn't be enough to justify his ADP. Coming in at number 12 is Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper's fate is 100% tied to Deshaun Watson. If Watson plays, Cooper could have a wide receiver one finish. If Watson is suspended, Cooper is stuck with Jacoby Brissett and there is very little chance he even finishes as a wide receiver two. He'd be lucky to average even 10 fantasy points per game in PPR. With so much unknown, Cooper is a big risk. At 11, J.K. Dobbins. With J.K. Dobbins, drafters are banking on a lot of things to go right for him to have any upside. Dobbins is still not a guarantee to start the season healthy, and when he does return to the field, it's very possible the Ravens limit the young back's workload to ease him back into action. There's just not a ton of upside here, and in his ADP range, you're passing over players at other positions with high upside. At 10, Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne has quickly gone from fantastic value pick to high risk with his ADP continuing to rise. It's very simple with Etienne. If James Robinson is unable to start the season, Etienne will be a three down back. But what happens when James Robinson is eventually good to go? Etienne could still see enough work on the ground combined with receptions to pay off. But on the other side, he could be forced into a committee on a bad team that can't move the ball. It's definitely a high risk, high reward situation. Coming in at number nine, George Kittle. George Kittle has been a lock for top five finishes at the position when playing the majority of the season. But with the 49ers officially moving on to Trey Lance, there's an unknown factor around just how much pass volume this offense will push. Between Kittle, Devo Samuel, and Brandon Ayuk, who had a strong finish to the season, there simply might not be enough volume to support another top five finish. At eight, Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell's rookie season was spectacular, finishing with just over 100 receptions, 1,000 yards, and six touchdowns. He was poised to move forward as Miami's wide receiver one until they traded for Tyreek Hill. 
And while Waddle is immensely talented, you just have to wonder if Miami's offense in Tua Tagovailoa can feed both Hill and Waddle enough to justify such a high pick. At number seven, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is coming off his second top 12 finish in total points in PPR and finished as RB14 in average points per game. He's typically a lock to pay off at his ADP. So what's the issue this year? If Raiders' new head coach Josh McDaniels opts to take a more New England type of approach to the running back room, Josh Jacobs' production would suffer, making him a risky option for your team. At number six, Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson had a difficult 2021 season playing through injury the majority of the season, but he still managed to produce a top 12 season in total points despite injury, lack of involvement in the pass game, and inconsistent usage. Unfortunately for Gibson, the commanders continue to show a lack of confidence in him. J.D. McKissick is returning to assume his pass catching role, and third round draft pick Brian Robinson could be a factor as well, limiting Gibson's upside. Coming in at number five, Cam Akers. Cam Akers was poised to take over the Rams' backfield in 2021 before tearing his Achilles. And while he did make a miraculous return at the end of the season, he didn't look particularly good. Perhaps it was too quick of a comeback for Akers, and it is encouraging that the Rams immediately gave him priority in the backfield, but it's still a possibility that he simply won't be productive on the ground and will have to share part of the workload with Daryl Henderson. Number four, AJ Brown. AJ Brown's 2021 season was very underwhelming. 869 yards, five touchdowns, and just 13.9 fantasy points per game. Brown has moved on to another run-heavy offense in Philadelphia that led the league in total rushing yards. The Eagles clearly want to invest in the pass, but Jalen Hurts is an unproven passer. And if things don't improve, the Eagles can just rely on their run game, leaving Brown is a big risk if you're drafting him as your wide receiver one. At three, Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel's 2021 season saw him finish as the wide receiver three, averaging 21.2 fantasy points per game but I wouldn't bet on him repeating that production. The jury is still out on whether or not Debo will continue that workload on the ground. And the 49ers will be led by Trey Lance, who also happens to be very gifted on the ground. And if Debo's rushing statistics don't continue and he's primarily used as a receiver, with a healthy George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk, it's a big risk to draft him in the early second round over much safer receivers. Coming in at number two, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is a high-end RB1 with age, usage, and injury concerns. Henry averaged a fantastic 24.2 fantasy points per game in PPR last year. For comparison, Jonathan Taylor averaged 21.9. A full season of Henry is definitely worth a top five pick. But you have to wonder if the 28-year-old running back with nearly 7,000 career rushing yards is nearing the end of his spectacular run. And our number one riskiest player is Christian McCaffrey. It doesn't get much riskier than a second overall pick that might not make it through even half of the season. We know Christian McCaffrey produces overall RB1 numbers when he is on the field. What we don't know is how long he will actually be on the field. Injuries have kept McCaffrey off of the field for two seasons in a row now, leading us to wonder if he simply no longer has the legs to make it through a full season. If he plays a full season, you have a huge advantage. If not, better luck next year. Thank you for watching 15 of the riskiest players in your fantasy draft. Be sure to like and subscribe to Fantasy Pros across all platforms and stick around for more content. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.